Well, hello there, my beautiful friends. Today I am going to be live swatching some of the brand new Cleona Cosmetics shadows that I just got in the mail. I ordered them about a month ago and they just showed up. So I figured I would share them with you guys today because they are too damn beautiful not to share. So if you are interested in seeing these new Cleona shadows live swatched and up close and personal, then go ahead and keep on watching and let's jump right on in. So full transparency here before we get started. I purchased three out of the seven shadows that I'm gonna be showing you guys today. So they gave me four as a little surprise, which is always so appreciated. So thank you so much, Cleona, that is so freaking sweet. And I wanted to try one of these shadows so incredibly bad, but I couldn't afford it at the time and they sent me it. So I am just so incredibly grateful, but just thought I'd let you guys know that I did purchase three of these, but four were sent to me as a little gift. Now, obviously we know Cleona by now. I'm sure you know Cleona by now if you're watching this video, but just in case you don't, they are an indie brand that is very well known for their multi-chromes and their beautiful iridescent glittery multi-chromes. Honestly, they're probably my favorite indie brand in the whole entire world. I love them so incredibly much and I use their products every single day. But as I stated, I have seven different shadows to show you guys today and three out of the seven are actually their jeweled multichromes or their deep iridescent multichromes. So they're much deeper in tone and then we have four that are pretty darn light and super iridescent angelic looking hues. They are absolutely beautiful. But with the swatches today, I did a typical finger swatch and then I used a brush to pick up some of the product, show you how it picks up on a brush and I applied it over top of a very thin layer of glitter glue. So the finger swatch is not over top of any glitter glue any primer anything it's just bare skin and the brush swatches over some glitter glue so you can see how they perform next to each other but let's go ahead and jump right on into the swatches let me stop my rambling here and let's look at these beautiful shadows the first shade I wanted to share with you guys is called luminaire and this is described as an iridescent multi-chrome now this is a nearly invisible based shadow that has color shifting reflex that go from red orange and finally to gold it is absolutely stunning I love the shifts of red and orange and then there's a little bit of that gold reflect to it as well it is so gorgeous it's one of those shadows that doesn't have a whole lot of shimmer to it it's definitely more of kind of like a metallic sheen if you will although there really isn't much base pigment to this at all if any at all it's just like a white kind of like they said sheer iridescent base that has a beautiful goldeny orangey red shift so you're not going to get anything that's super chunky or anything super sparkly this is more of just a standard kind of metallic shift it is absolutely beautiful i think that if you are into this kind of color if you like orangey red pinky toned things but you don't want anything that's too shimmery I think this would be beautiful as a highlighter for you because it's not going to be overly shimmery here I'm picking up luminaire with a brush and it picks up beautifully with a brush as you can see I'm not like digging my brush into the pans or anything I always tend to apply eyeshadows with a very heavy hand to my actual face but when I'm doing swatches I pick up eyeshadow so softly and like gingerly. I don't know why I don't mean to do it, but I'm just so incredibly gentle with the pans on camera, but not in person. It's the strangest thing. But as you can see, you're gonna get full pigmentation whether or not you use a glitter glue. You're just gonna get a little bit more intensity with the glitter glue, but if you wanted to just use this plain, you could totally just use it on bare skin. It works beautifully. Now, the second shade I have to share with you is called Gleam. This is an iridescent glitter multi so you are gonna get those beautiful little glitters of goodness in there which I personally love and this is described as an iridescent pressed glitter shadow that has a nearly invisible base that has a color shifting reflect that go from pink to orange and finally to yellow so it is pretty similar to luminaire although luminaire does have a deeper toned shift to it it has that red shift and the shade does not have the red so it is a little bit lighter and a little bit more iridescent of course and as you can see it is very very intense and very shimmery and sparkly and beautiful 
this is my kind of shade. I knew immediately when I saw a swatch of this online, I knew then and there I had to have it. I need to get this in my collection. I will fight people for it. And somehow I was able to get my paws on this during their last restock. But it is absolutely gorgeous as you can see. There's that beautiful kind of goldy pink iridescent shift. And then there's a little bit of yellow in there as well, which gives it a brightness that I really enjoy. It looks very, very similar to Jeffree Star's Lick My you know I can't say that on YouTube. I was demonetized last time a girl tried to. Now, as you can see, this picks up with a brush beautifully, but Cleona does suggest that you use their glitter multichromes and their iridescent glitter multichromes with a tacky base, whether that be a glitter glue, whether that be just a basic eye primer. You definitely want to use this particular shadow and this particular formula with something sticky underneath. This way you can get the full longevity and the full intensity of the shadow. A tacky base will just help to keep the shadow looking extra bright and shimmery all day long. Now this third shadow, I was actually kind of stunned by how beautiful the shadow is in person. I don't even think the camera does it justice and it looks absolutely gorgeous on camera, don't get me wrong, but in person, I seriously was just mesmerized by this eyeshadow. This is the shade Lux, and this is a glitter iridescent multichrome as well. It's described as having a nearly invisible base with a color shifting reflect that goes from yellow to lime to turquoise and finally to violet. And this shade in particular has slightly more glitter in it. It has more of a kind of glittery shimmery finish, if you will, but it's not chunky by any means. This is the definition of mermaid eyeshadow. If you're the kind of gal or boy who likes mermaidy things, mermaid shadows, you need this in your life. Look at that finger swatch. Like, look at that on my finger. That is the most aerial Little Mermaid looking shadow I think I've ever seen in my entire life. It is so stinking beautiful. I legitimately took this swatch, walked over to the room next to me after filming this and showed my boyfriend and was like, look at this. Look how beautiful this eyeshadow is. It is so gorgeous and it is so intense and bright. And as you can see, it's not super chunky or anything. And that reflect is unlike anything I've ever seen. It looks like an oyster, like the inside of an oyster shell. They have perfectly captured the mermaidy oyster type of scenario in an eyeshadow. Now we're picking up the shadow with a brush. I think that this guy picked up beautifully with a brush. You don't really need that much product, of course. And obviously this is gonna be beautiful padded over the lid with your finger as well. Obviously here, this is over top of the glitter glue, so it's gonna be more intense, but with this type of shade, like I said earlier, you do wanna use a glitter glue just because it does have those iridescent shimmery particles. If it's not a glittery shadow, I don't really think you need a glitter glue, but if there are those really intense, super shimmery particles, I would say, you know, play it safe, use a glitter glue, this way you won't have to worry about it throughout the day falling on your face or you know disappearing or anything like that. I do think that this applied better with a finger and that's just because you're able to pick up much more of that shadow with your fingertip than you are with a brush. But either way, they are both absolutely stunning. Next up, we have the shade Gloaming, and this is described as a glitter iridescent multichrome as well. Now, this is the silvery iridescent pressed glitter shadow with shifting reflex that go from pink to orange to yellow to lime, and finally, it has some hints of turquoise at some angles as well. I think you can honestly see all of those colors in the pan here. I was like also mesmerized by this shade. I was just staring at it in the pan like, you are so beautiful, how are you so beautiful? To me, the colors that stand out the most in this shadow are obviously the beautiful kind of aqua-y teal undertone that we have there, but then you can really see that orangey yellow base as well. It really translates nicely on the skin and I think this shade is absolutely stunning. There is a little bit of pink in there as well, which makes it a little bit more interesting. I like that it's kind of like a turquoise, pink, orangey type of scenario. I have not seen any eyeshadows like this ever, at least I don't think I have. I think if you're the kind of person who likes iridescent makeup, I think you need this one in your life. I think you need the shade Gloaming and I think you need the shade Lux. Obviously Lux was kind of similar just in tone, but Lux has that beautiful golden shift that is super intense and strong. And as you can see here, Gloaming has much more of a pinky purple orangey kind of thing going on. In addition to that turquoise a limey kind of base, it is such an interesting and unique shadow and it's definitely different enough from Lux to justify getting both of them, I think. <laughs> It is so stinking beautiful. I can't believe that there are so many reflex packed into this little tiny shadow. I don't know how they do it. 
So now we're getting into the deeper toned multi-chromes. This is the shade Mosaic and this is one of their jeweled multi-chromes. Now I believe that this is from their very first launch of their original multi-chromes for the brand, which is kind of crazy. I think that launched about a year ago or so and they have just come so far with their multi-chromes. It's insane. This jeweled multi-chrome is described as having a red base with an orange reflect, a golden reflect, and some pink shimmers and a pink reflect as well. As you can see in the pan, you have that kind of berry pinky red base and then you have a beautiful orangey gold shift and orangey gold shimmers it is so intense it's not super overly shimmery although there are some smaller particles of shimmers it's not anything like the glitter multi-chromes where they're very very intensely shimmered this guy is much more subtle and subdued and you're going to get more of a metallic finish on the eyes than you typically would with some of the other shades that i've shown you this guy is so bright and intense and it's deep and sultry but it's also bright and kind of colorful at the same time if that makes sense. Fiona suggests that you use this type of shadow over top of a primer but you don't necessarily need to use it over a glitter glue. Like I said I think that's because this guy doesn't have that many shimmers. It's more so of a metallic multi-chrome finish so you're not really going to get that fallout like you would if you were using one of the iridescent glitters. This guy definitely applies better with a finger obviously as you can tell but you just need two applications of it to get to full pigmentation if you're going to use a brush once you apply two layers you really can't tell much of a difference between the two other than my really crappy terrible swatching skills as you can see i am not the best swatcher in the world good thing i make swatch videos on youtube right so now we have another jeweled multi-chrome. This is the shade Rose Line, and this is described as having a red berry toned base that has gold and orange shifts running throughout it, and it also has a bit of a magenta shift and a bit of a cool toned kind of raisin undertone, if you will. I think you can see what I'm talking about. It's a lot more cool toned than Mosaic. Mosaic was much more orangey looking, much more fiery, and Rose Line is kind of similar, but it's much cooler in tone. I think it's such a beautiful eyeshadow. It does seem to have a bit more shimmers, but not anything that's too overwhelming, anything that's too substantial. It's definitely lightly shimmered, but you can see that there. It's a little bit more shifty and a little bit more shimmery. But once I applied this to the skin, as you can see, this applied beautifully. It was super smooth. All of these have been very consistent, very smooth, not chalky or chunky or anything like that. Now, Rose Line did pick up nicely with a brush, but just like with the other shades, you're just going to get more of a strong payoff and more of an even payoff if you just use your finger. But I understand that some people have long nails and they can't really do that. So this guy definitely does apply it well with a brush, but you just need to do short kind of little strokes or do padding motions. You don't want to do any super long strokes like I'm doing here. Yeah, I messed this up royally as you can see and that's why it looks a little bit patchy. If I were to have just followed the instructions like Cleona very graciously gives everybody on their website, if I were to have just followed those, I would have had the perfect application. So take a lesson from my mistakes. Don't do what I did. Don't use super long strokes with these shadows. You just want to do short little strokes or padding motions over top of your eyelid or wherever you're going to be applying applying this to get full pigmentation. And last but certainly not least, we have the shade Vermilion, which is one of their deep iridescent multichromes, so he's definitely a bit different than the other shades I've shown you thus far. Now, this is described as a pink gold shifter with a tan base, and what's really interesting about these iridescent deeper multichromes is that they're basically meant to be iridescent shades that can work for a bunch of different skin tones. They're not that typical stark white iridescent that we see a lot of times. This is an iridescent tone that's going to work for people with darker skin, so I really appreciate that they went ahead and made some that aren't just stark white, but they're definitely still iridescent. Don't get me wrong, they're beautiful. Even though this is a deeper kind of pinky berry toned iridescent shade it's still really bright and intense and that beautiful golden shift is so prevalent and it's so strong this is such a creamy and smooth eyeshadow i think you can see that on my finger here it is so incredibly smooth and buttery i was kind of shocked by it it is such a beautiful shade and i haven't seen anything like this the texture of this eyeshadow is just to die for it applied so smoothly and intensely and look at that sheen the sheen is so bright and in your face without being sparkly or shimmery or anything like that it is 
so beautiful. And I can definitely see the iridescence that they're talking about in this shade, just in that beautiful iridescent pink shift. This shadow picked up really nicely with a brush. I did feel like I really kind of had to work it a little bit more into the skin, but then again, I was doing the wrong type of method <laughs> to basically put these eyeshadows on. I was doing the long strokes. I was applying it incorrectly essentially and you just you don't want to do what i'm doing here you want to do short little padding motions you want to dip your brush into the shadow swipe back and forth and do little padding motions to get a nice even application and i was doing long gross strokes that were you know brushing the product away from where it needed to be but as you can see we got there and the intensity and the shine and the reflect of this shadow i want this like all over my body it is absolutely beautiful and i truly have not seen anything like it I think that if this is your kind of jam, if you like rosy iridescent shades, this is something truly unique that I think that so many people are going to enjoy. I was honestly left kind of speechless by this shade. But who am I kidding? I was left honestly speechless by this entire congregation of shadows here. They were all so interesting and unique and beautiful in their own way. And while looking at them in the actual pans and looking at them put together in a Z palette, they might look kind of similar. These all had their own characteristics and they were all different enough to in my head justify having all of these but i really hope that you enjoyed seeing these new cleona shadows swatched and up close and personal and in action i hope that it was helpful for you and i hope that you just had a good time watching these eyeshadows be swatched like i said cleona cosmetics is my favorite indie brand hands down i love them so incredibly much they have such beautiful formulas and beautiful colors to choose from and if you have not tried them oh my goodness i urge you to try Try this indie brand because they have truly beautiful product that honestly in my opinion perform better than practically anything you could get at a mainstream Sephora or Ulta they are so unique and beautiful so please I urge you try Cleona if you haven't yet and report back let me know how you feel so let me know in the comments what some of your favorite Cleona shades are, if you liked any of the ones I swatched for you today. Are any of you guys out there like me and basically record and write down a wish list of shadows that you want to get once they do a restock? I do that with a lot of brands. I write down all of the shades that I want from a brand and if they end up coming back in stock or doing a pre-order or something like that, I have it all written out there for me. I don't have to worry about it. So are you guys weird like me and do that kind of stuff? Let me know in the comments below. But with that being said, I'm going to be signing off here for today. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I would absolutely love it if you gave me a big old thumbs up and subscribed if you want to see more things like this from my channel and see more iridescent indie brand goodness here. But with that being said, I hope you were having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are. And thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope to see you next time. Bye.